our current Prime Minister, the International Day of Yoga has become quite the talk of town. This worldwide commemoration, also known as World Yoga Day or simply Yoga Day, is celebrated each year on the 21st of June, which is the summer solstice. It was officially declared as such by the United Nations General Assembly on December 11, 2014. On this day, yoga students, teachers and enthusiasts perform yogasanas in large numbers to spread awareness. But yogasanas or postures are just one aspect of yoga and many of us don't quite know the larger picture. In today's episode of Culture Express, I shall attempt to give you an overview of the ancient Indian tradition of yoga. Teachers like Vivekananda, Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, BKS Iyengar and others took the idea of yoga to America but eventually only the Hatha Yoga aspect stuck. The aim of celebrations like Yoga Day may be to proliferate the yoga system globally but the thrust remains primarily on the physical. Popular media only reinforces this notion by splashing image after image of celebrities and regular people on their yoga mats contorting their bodies in difficult poses. Today, the West's narrow understanding of yoga as mostly a set of exercises seems to be colouring our vision too. We hear of and sometimes adopt fusion forms like hot yoga, aerial yoga, paddle board yoga and even doga, that's dog yoga. More often than not, these fads are aligned with the spa, weight loss and beauty industries and has little to do with the ancient Indian origins of yoga. What then is yoga? Yoga is one of the six philosophical systems or Shad Darshan of India, the other five being Sankhya, Nyaya, Vaisheshika, Mimamsa and Vedanta. Its foundational text is the Yoga Sutra, whose author was Patanjali, the same guy who is the brand name for Baba Ramdev's FMCG empire. The Yoga Sutra is understood to have been composed in the 4th century CE, but the first references to yoga lie as far back as the Rig Vedic period. More references are found in the Upanishads and famously the Bhagavad Gita. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yuj which means to yoke or join together. It implies the synthesis of all faculties of a being resulting in transcendence from all empirical differences. The Yoga Sutra prescribes eight limbs or Ashtanga Yoga to ensure a holistic and gradual ascent towards such transcendence. The eight components of Ashtanga Yoga begin with Yama or ethical or moral principles which include Ahimsa or non-violence, Satya or truthfulness, Asateya or non-stealing, Brahmacharya or sexual restraint and Aparigraha or non-avarice. The second component is Niyama or virtuous habits including Shaucha or purity of mind, speech and body, Santosha or contentment, Tapas or austerity, Swadhyaya or study and introspection and Ishvara Pranidhan or contemplation of God. The third component is Asanas or postures that Patanjali merely suggests be comfortable and sustainable. The fourth is Pranayam or breath control. The fifth to the eighth stages refer to workings of the inner self. These are Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana and Samadhi, moving from withdrawing one's senses to fixing one's mind to meditating to finally reaching the state of oneness. We shall reserve the discussion of epistemology and metaphysics of yoga philosophy for another day. You will notice how asanas and to some extent pranayam, which receive most of our attention, are the third and fourth stages of Ashtanga Yoga. They presume an adherence to the first and second steps of moral and pure living that few modern yoga enthusiasts can claim to follow. That said, well-being of the body as a starting point for well-being of the mind and soul makes sense to many, which is where schools like Hatha Yoga come in. It is this brand of yoga that lays special emphasis on mastering the physical body through simple and complex asanas that most of us are familiar with. Mythologically, the god Shiva is said to be its first preceptor, but most of our knowledge of it comes from a 15th century common era text called the Hatha Pradipika, composed by Swatmaram. This school, which also popularized the concept of Kundalini, has influences of Tantra, the Natha tradition and even Buddhism. 
Beyond its physical applications, other popular uses of the term yoga come to us from the Bhagavad Gita. The text tells us of three paths to moksha including Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. They imply walking on paths dominated by knowledge, action and devotion respectively. Another term one comes across is Raja Yoga which literally means Royal Yoga and has numerous connotations. However, it was made popular by Swami Vivekanand who used it to denote Ashtanga Yoga thereby acclaiming it as the royal or the best path. His assertion that the practice of yoga leads to both universal well-being and self-liberation is perhaps the end we all ought to be striving for. Mm -hmm.